Hello and welcome to A Homespun House. My name is Molly and I am greeting you from Berlin, Germany where it is really a sunny day outside and that just feels so wonderful. Um, it's just the sun makes such a difference in the day, the attitude, the things that you can do. We've spent so much time outside which has just been fantastic. But even with that, I've gotten a lot of knitting in in the last couple of weeks um, because believe it or not, it has been quite gray. And even on those sunny days, it's just perfect to take out your knitting because let's face it, the weather aside, every time is a good time to knit. So I did go ahead and finish my Molly Weasley socks. This is a pattern that I designed and um, this is the third pair of socks that I've knit in this. My ends have not been woven in. If you've never watched the podcast before, I am terrible about weaving my ends in. And I have all of my tails hanging. This one I have tucked in. Last week on the, or not last week, two weeks ago on the previous podcast, I talked about all of these tails. This is, you know, the general size tail that I'll keep six to eight inches on my socks, anything that I knit really, unless it's a garment. Of course, if it needed to be seamed, I would definitely leave a longer tail. But I had been noticing on Instagram and other people's podcasts that even with socks and just, you know, the, the, the cuffs of the arm where there's no seaming needed, needed, you know, just where you would weave that in, I had noticed people having these massive quantities of yarn and I was just wondering what was up with that. And uh, most people just said, you know, um, it's easy because they don't want to accidentally weave in that end. So if they have this massive bow, it reminds them not to, to knit with the wrong side, which I thought was funny, um, or for seaming. So kind of what I thought, I just wondered if there was some secret behind why people were leaving those um, long ends. But thank you so much for answering. That was really, really helpful and so nice of you guys for listening to my cry of why people were leaving those long ends. So I finished these two socks and this is out of a homespun house, my yarn. This is the If You're a Bird, I'm a Bird colorway. There will be, I would say maybe about 20 skeins of this in the shop this week. Um, I'll probably dye that up on Tuesday. So that will probably be in the shop on Wednesday on different bases. I think I'll probably dye it up. Um, I think Dale would be really fun. I've really mastered how to dye up different colorways on Dale. I had had a, quite a while where it was really hard for me to dye a lot of the colorways on Dale because that's a non-superwash yarn and it takes the dyes very, very differently than a superwash yarn. If you're a dyer, you'll know what I'm talking about. But just within the last month, I would say, I've really experimented a lot and I've really kind of discovered how to dye um, a non-superwash yarn to get the same, you know, sort of um, saturation and dye job as a non-superwash. So I'm really, really proud of myself for that. So I'll dye that up on Soft Sock, the Stellina yarn, which I still need to name. Um, and I still don't know what to do about Olsen yet. I still have all of the those skeins of undyed yarn and I don't know what I want to do with it if I want to bring it back to the shop or not. So both of those are done. This is my size of sock. I love these. I did knit these. I guess I'll talk about them a little bit more. I did go ahead and knit these on a size zero or two millimeter sock. I believe I knit this in magic loop with my zings. I can't remember what because I finished these maybe a week ago and I I love this sock base. It's a homespun house's soft sock. It will have a different name in the future. But it's fabulous. It's a really, really wonderful sock. I'm going to open the window. It's really warm in here. Sue, don't be laughing at me. <laughs> Sue mentioned in her periscope that she enjoyed me getting up and down all the time. But it's warm in here. so And it's a nice sunny day. So why not have the windows open? They're open in all of the other rooms. So definitely open it in here. So I'm sure you'll hear the kids outside playing. Elodie, Emma, Ruby, and um, Elodie's papa, Robert, are outside playing at the park. So um, we've already been at the park today. I'll talk about all of that a little bit later. So this is 64 stitches. And 
I love this. I, I honestly don't think that I will be knitting socks for myself unless it's a sport weight yarn on anything less than 64 stitches. And I kind of have to laugh at myself and I feel shocked at myself and with myself for finding it out so late. And I feel like it was such a mistake that it happened because I had this episode where I was so confused with how people knit with 64 stitches and I just thought it was crazy and um, it works perfect for the size um, 2 millimeter or US 0. I love the, the stitch definition, I just adore the gauge and I think it's perfect. I really like the way sock yarn knits up a lot more on this size of a needle. So. Um, yeah, I'm knitting another pair of socks right now. I'm wondering if this can be um, the Grocery Girls, who I love. I really adore Josie and Tracy. Josie. Mm -hmm. Jody and Tracy. Their podcast is so much fun. They usually have a longer podcast, but I really, really enjoy that because um, some evenings Robert is gone, and I like to have a podcast that really takes up a bit of time that... I just thoroughly enjoy watching and I never get bored with their podcasts. So um, tonight, for example, Robert won't be here. He has um, an audition for something pretty exciting. And I'm definitely going to pop on their latest podcast, watch it, enjoy, and do a bit of knitting. So I am knitting a pair of socks. Now they're doing a sock knit along and I think that this sock knit along, I don't know if it's, I can't remember if they said it's a new technique. Or just something different in sock knitting so I'm curious if this one fits in there it's not a new technique or anything where are these socks I believe these are in my Alex Collins project bag um, I got in some new progress keepers and these ones are so cute I love naturey things and I don't know if you can see this one but it's a really pretty tree I often hang my progress keepers up here on my bag um, if it's a drawstring bag. So I have had Lydia and Sarah from O Loops or Fiber by, De by Design podcast gifted me this yarn. So let's see what it's called. Quite a while ago, I think in January, it's called Garden Magic and it is on their 100% Superwash Merino yarn. It's 328 yards and it's 100 grams. So I decided, so this is the colorway. It is absolutely stunning. When they sent it to me, I opened the package and I saw this yarn and I just thought, I'm curious which one of them dyed it. I'm really curious because they have such different dye techniques. I'm gonna guess that Lydia dyed this. I'm really curious though. Which one of you dyed this yarn? Lydia, Sarah? but I really love it. It's all different shades of blue and like a tobacco-y brown with sage and um, some undyed yarns with lilac and it's, you should have seen it in the skein where you could see like actually how they dyed it. It was beautiful and it still is beautiful caked up. So I've cast these on, and this is in sport weight yarn. I've never, ever knit a sock in sport weight yarn, so that's why I'm wondering if this would fit into the knit along. And these socks, I knit 52 stitches, and I knit them on 2.5 millimeter needles. And I'm doing the Hermione's Everyday Sock. So I knit the cuff to here, and I don't even remember how many rounds it was. I think it was about 20 and knit the leg, I did a heel gusset flap, and I've never done the Eye of Partridge heel, which I know Danny of Little Bobbins talked about quite a while ago, and she just talked about how much she adored it, and since then I've always wanted to knit it, so I think on my next pair of socks I will have to do the Eye of Partridge heel because I am entirely intrigued. Um, I have a bit of the foot done. I think it's almost finished. I can remember Lara was talking about on her podcast, the Fawn and the Fox podcast. I don't even remember what sock she was knitting, but she was knitting the cuff and she was like, I always knit the cuff and it just goes on forever and then I get to the foot and then I'm basically done. But Lara, you have really small feet. 
<laughs> when you said that, I was like, you have really small feet. Of course they go really fast, you know? So for those of us who have larger feet, I wear a size eight and a half American, so a size 39 European. Um, it definitely takes as long as the cuff. For me, my foot is basically as long as my cuff. Um, but you're so lucky that yours don't take as long. I've been really tempted to knit a pair of socks for Robert, but his take even longer. And now that I'm using the size zero or two millimeter needles for a standard fingering weight yarn, I think I'd have to cast on 72 stitches for his sock. And 64 stitches for his sock felt like a lot. And that's what I'm knitting mine at. So right now I'm knitting these with the Oloops sport weight yarn and I'm really loving it. I haven't knit these for a couple of days just because I've been working on another project that's really been taking up my time. So um, I feel like every podcast I've been getting a new pair of socks done and then almost one sock finished and that's been really exciting. I kind of feel like I have a goal to have a pair of socks and then a half sock finished each podcast. That just feels like a nice tempo to have two pair of socks a week which seems kind of crazy because that means 24 socks at the end of the year but extremely exciting at the same time so I'm loving knitting with this yarn this sport weight sock has the most fantastic feel to it I I think I've only ever knit with sport weight yarn hand dyed sport weight yarn once and that was my Whispering Pine Shawl, the Yak Yarn from Bijou Basin, and that was amazing. And I love this for socks. While there is no nylon in it, I know it's a merino, um, so they probably won't wear the best, but I think that's fine. I think these will be just extra special warm socks, and I love knitting socks. I don't think I will have a lack, a shortage of socks in my box of socks. Kristen, if any of you guys aren't doing that, definitely join in. That hashtag has gone crazy on Instagram. It's it's insane. But Kristen from Vol and Vine um, Yarns, the Yarngasm podcast, I'm sure all of you know about this. Um, but she's doing a box of socks where you get a really cool box of box to put your socks in, and you knit a pair of socks each month, and at the end you have 12 socks, and um, you can enter them to win. So. Um, I'm definitely joining in on that. It's been a lot of fun. I think so far I maybe have, I have no idea, I really don't even know, eight pairs of socks. So I'm enjoying these. I love this Oloops yarn. It's the first, it's the second Oloops yarn I've ever knit with and they do a really fantastic job. I feel like more and more I hear people talking about them and I understand why. It's beautiful. The saturation is beautiful. The colors are really pretty. Um, and I've been using my Little Bobbins needle, um, Cozy. I just thought it matched the yarn perfect and I had to use them together. And then I have this. This is just one of my favorite charms that we have. And I kind of always have these in the shop. It's just a really delicate little heart charm. And I just think it's so sweet. It's really light in weight and small and I don't know, something about it just makes me smile every time I see it. it. It looks pretty with any yarn and like I said, it's just a really pretty delicate piece. So that's the pair of socks that I have cast on now. The second pair of socks I haven't cast on. I have the yarn right next to me. I can't show you guys because that yarn, I saved one skein for myself. I think it's the first Harry Potter yarn that while dying, I def I specifically dyed a skein for myself because I loved it so much that I thought I have to knit this in socks. And that's that um, I almost just gave something away. That yarn was sent out on Saturday, so most people have not received that yarn yet. Um, all Harry Potter Club, all Jane Austen yarn for April has been sent out. I've been getting some emails about that. I feel like a lot of people maybe aren't aware that I feel like you can get really lucky with mail from Germany or you can get very unlucky. It can either arrive very quickly or it can either be to the point where you are wondering where in the world your package is. And right when you start to wonder where it is, it arrives. So please do not fret if you are in the Jane Austen Yarn Club especially, which was sent out 
a while ago. I'm sure it will be there. If it's a month later, that's when I would start to worry. So the reason why I haven't worked on those is because in my gorgeous Love Sockwell bag um, that Sarah gifted me, I love this bag. It's another one of my favorites. It's really funny. I don't really use any of my project bags anymore. I really appreciate the bags that I get from other bag makers. I make my own bags, so I don't really want to keep those. I, I love the ones that other people make. They just are so much more special because it's coming from someone else. It's coming from another maker. Um, but the reason why I haven't worked on that is because I'm working on a really special project. It's very, very simple. So Adody has a pair of leg warmers that I knit her, I don't know, maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago at the most. They're out of Patton's Croy, the rag sock. Oh, I can't remember what the colorway is called. It's a very, very popular color. It's the one with the orange and the blue and the red and grays, I believe. I don't remember exactly. I knit them so long ago. I also knit a pair of socks with that that I gifted to my mom. So it already wanted a pair of leg warmers that were a little bit larger, a little bit more roomy. And she asked if she could have some really bright tonal um, glitter yarn. She said she wanted it to have glitter in it. So I said, you mean the Stellina? And she said, yeah. So then I brought out the berry yarn and I showed it to her and she said, yes, I want that. I want you to dye it different shades of pink. So I dyed it and she kind of, you know, looked over my shoulder and said she wants more pink here. She wants more pink there. She wants this to be brighter. She wants this to be darker. It was a really cool, fun process. And she really um, inspired this skein of yarn. It's a one of a kind. It's the only yarn that I've ever dyed this color, it's pink. I've dyed a lot of pink yarn, um, and it's maybe hard to see in the skein, or in the cake, but it is fantastic. It is this super, just saturated pink with probably 10 different shades of pink in there. It's just really, really fun. So, um, I, I knit and finished almost an entire leg warmer. And I knit it on, to begin with, I knit it on the two millimeter, the size zero, with 52 stitches. She's four years old, she's a small girl. She's tall, but you know, she's of normal size, I guess. And I was just looking at it and I thought, oh my goodness, this is going to be way too it's just going to fit her with no ease. It would just be a perfectly fitted sock or leg warmer, I mean. So I just looked at it and I felt super sorrowful and I spent so much time knitting on it, four and a half hours, maybe five hours, probably four and a half hours. I probably knit 10 inches, eight to 10 inches. And I was just like, oh my goodness, I have to rip this out. So I waited a couple of days and then I ripped it out and I cast on another one and I decided to do the 2.5 millimeter needles. I know I said this hasn't been blocked yet and there are still the ends hanging out of course, but these ones will get woven in because Adody will wear them and I will weave them in right away. I could even weave them in while I talked with you, but I don't think I have a, a needle with me. I don't. I do in another bag, but anyway. So I know I said that I wanted to knit these on the two millimeter needles, but I figured for the leg warmer, it's really nice. I, I didn't want it to be too thick. The other ones that I knit, I did knit on 2.5 millimeter needles, and I don't remember how many stitches I did, but it was definitely less than 52. Um, and we had tried the other leg warmer on, and like I said, it didn't fit with any positive ease, so I thought going up a half of a millimeter would be perfect and would give it, you know, some ease. So I knit it, I trusted myself with knitting it, and it's perfect. It can scrunch up on her leg and it's easy to get on and off and I feel like it's just a nice size. So I knit 13 rows and then just knit, 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 knit and then I knit 13 rows again um, at the bottom and then I just did a normal um, in pattern bind off. So the knit two, purl two. So it's really simple, just my own pattern if you even want to call it that. Um, but if any of you are interested in knitting leg warmers for a four-year-old girl, that's what I did. 52 stitches, 13 rows of knit two, purl two, 
I knit for about 8 inches and then I did another 13 rows of Knit Do Purl 2 and bind off. So one of those is done and then I have cast on the other one. I'm using Knit Pro Zings for any of you who are interested. It was really fun knitting them on the 2 millimeters because those are pink and maybe that's just what made my mind want to use them. But now I'm using red, which looks cool with pink too. Not that the needles really matter, but it is fun to match your, your knitting to your needles, kind of. Um, I would love some Knitter's Pride Rosewood double points, but I don't think they make them. So that stinks. I love my interchangeable set. Um, so I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm going pretty good on this one. It's about halfway done, I guess. And like I said, Robert will be gone all evening tonight, so... I'm hoping to get these finished so that Erudy can wear them tomorrow. That would be really fun if she was able to wear them at Kita tomorrow. So there's those and I don't know what I'll do with the rest. I thought about maybe making a shawl for Erudy with it. I don't think it would be enough for a shawl because 400 grams of this yarn is enough to make a shawlette which is, fits Erudy kind of perfect. So I think I might have to um, maybe use a different skein of yarn with it, maybe some leftovers from something. I do have some, oh goodness, what is Kristen's yarn? Is it called Pandora's Box? Pandora? I think it's called Pandora. I could use her Pandora with that because I think that it would look really nice with this. I could just do a simple striped shawl with maybe some fun, simple lace at the bottom. Um, so that's definitely an idea, just kind of make up an easy design I think she would really like that. And she said that she would love to have a shawl with it. So that is that project. Um, I don't even think there's anything in this bag. This is my bag from Lulee and I love it. No, there isn't. I just had a bunch of minis in there because if you guys can see this bowl, there are loads of ends in here. I wove in, okay, so this blanket was not square the last time we spoke. I don't remember the last um, thing that I knit on here. It might have been in bloom. I think it was in bloom. My colorway from a homespun house. So since I last spoke with you guys, I knit, if you are a bird, I'm a bird. And then I knit this mini skein um, from a friend, from one of you guys. You sent it to me. Um, I knit that into there. So just two. I did two um, squares on my blanket these last two weeks and the reason why I think I only knit two squares was because I had kind of told myself that once I squared off the blanket so you can see every single edge um, has been knit so I told myself that once I squared off the blanket um, I would have to weave in all the inside ends and that was so many ends so this is the inside of the blanket you can see that all of the corner the outside edges have one end that need to be woven in but all of the other ends are woven in and the reason why I always keep um, a string on the outside of my blanket is because sometimes when joining I do join seamlessly but sometimes when joining, you will get a teeny tiny little like circle in here. So that, that's the back side that I'm showing you. But you will get just a teeny little gap here. Really small, but I, I do like to close that. Um, so I will always leave that extra string hanging there. And then usually when I finish a row, I'll just go ahead and weave in those ends. So... Um, I'm really happy. I'm so happy that I decided to sit down and do it. I think it took me, I would say, two hours to weave in just those ends. Um, it was just the the bordering, you know, the bordering squares, the squares beneath the bordering square. So it wasn't all of the ends, definitely not. But this is the way my blanket is looking right now when it's folded. So it's getting big. I can definitely sit on the couch and cover my body with it um, and I may have some little toes poking out um, but it goes from beneath my breast to my my toes so that's really nice comfortably and my toes wouldn't poke out then um, and Robert and I can have it over both of our legs if we want to do it like that and that's really nice 
but I can't wait. I keep thinking I want to finish it and start a new one. And the problem is, is that when I started this blanket, I have these center squares, and those are kind of, it's hard to see, but those are like these squares right here. And where are the other ones? Just kind of right here. And those are a lot of, I don't know, they're just not yarns that I love. Most of them are not indie dyed yarns. I would say a third of the beginning ones are. A lot of the other ones are Regia's Opal, um, Patton's Croy, just some other German, you know, sturdy sock yarns. And, um, which are still nice, but I feel like they're not even in colorways that I love. I just wanted to start my sock blanket so bad that I used squares from things that I've knit. I, I have knit things with all of these yarns, but the more and more that I've been knitting, I've really been knitting with, I feel like, more treasured yarns. Um, yarns that I just find more and more beautiful. I'm willing to spend a lot more money on yarns. I'm dyeing hand yarns. I, I'm hand dyeing yarns. I'm not dyeing hand yarns. My taste, I guess, maybe has just changed a lot. I would not knit with a lot of the things that are in here anymore. Um, and I wouldn't put some of these weird squares in here like this one. This is like an art yarn right here. And I had knit, oh my goodness, maybe 15 years ago, some bags with these, just some drawstring bags. And I had given them as gifts to some of my friends and family members. And I don't know why I put that as a square in there, but I was talking to Robert about it. I said, you know, I could even cut it out because each square is individual, you know, and then just kind of re-knit a square in there, kind of like an afterthought heel. And he was like, why? Isn't that the point of a cozy memories blanket to have all of those things in there that you've knit with and to look at them and remember those things? And I definitely do. You know, I look at these and I'm like, that's Robert socks. Those are my Christmas socks that actually look like a watermelon and not Christmas. I knit an octopus with this. Um, just, you know, look at all of them, and I definitely know different things that I've knit with them. But like I said, I feel like they're not super gorgeous or anything. But I, I have to let myself accept that they're in there, even though, seriously, every time I look at them, <laughs> I wonder what I was thinking. Um, but it's okay. It's okay. I want it to, get a, to be a big blanket, and... I have a lot of knitting time, so hopefully it would be fun to think of there being another one, but I just really have to focus and commit myself to this one. I cannot start another one. This one needs to get bigger. Every time, I feel like there's so many times that I say, I want to stop knitting on this, I'm finished with it, or I want to start a new one, but I think even starting a new one wouldn't make me happy, I feel like. This blanket makes me happy once I start to knit on it. I really, really love it. And that's how I feel right now. I feel like I'm in a place that I really enjoy knitting on it. And even as I'm talking about it, I just want to knit on it now. I feel like I'm Sue and Chelsea where everything I talk about, I'm like, I want to knit on that. Okay, I pick up this other one. No, 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 this is what I'm going to knit on because I, def I definitely feel like that. I get inspired by everything that I'm knitting and everything that a lot of other people are knitting. And that's what this is all about. That's what knitting is all about, what crafting is all about, what... Um, friending people who knit and craft and podcasts are all about and it's just fantastic so I knit my little squares on my um, 2.75 carbons straights I wish these were shorter I definitely wish that these were you know a third shorter that would be ideal um, I have seen that Knit, Knitters, Knit Pro or Knitter's Pride has come out with the Royale set. I have the interchangeable set. I want to knit with that a little bit more before I talk about it, but I think that they have come out with a shorter needle. I need to look more into that. Um, and I do keep those in one of my a Homespun House bags. This is maybe the only a Homespun House bag that I have. And then I have this really sweet little Notions pouch from the Fawn and the Fox. And in here I have all of my future mini skeins that I want to knit with. And just looking at them makes me excited. I do have all of my other mini skeins in here. Um, so once those are gone, mini skeins always keep coming. 
so it's nice to have a lot to choose from because some days you want to knit with something colorful, some days you want to knit with a single ply, some days I want to try out, you know, different things, so it's really nice to be able to have a variety. So the next thing and final thing that I've been working on is also in my Fawn in the Fox wool felt hand dyed bag. Um, Lara makes these and they're hand dyed by a local person to her. And I am knitting this in our um, Dale DK base. It's a non superwash yarn, which I love, in the barley colorway. So I have finished the body. It's all done, cast off, and this is just a raglan style pullover that I'm knitting from no pattern, just my own. Um, and as you can see, let's see. I have cast on for the arm. Now I guess I can take this off of my needle cozy. This is another one of Danny from Little Bobbin's needle cozies. Um, I'm knitting this with my, um, why can't I remember what these are called? I just showed these to you guys. Anyway, the needles that I was knitting my socks with, I'm knitting them with those in the size 3.5 millimeter needle. And this is just really fun. I haven't spent a lot of time this past week knitting on this. Um, I would, I really, really want to have this done by the next podcast. If it's not done by the next podcast, then I feel like I'll never wear it because, um, at least until the fall, because time for wearing this is definitely, definitely wearing out. Um, I have, again, my really fun donut progress keeper on there, and then just, or that's a, a stitch marker, and then the hilarious kitty donut progress keeper. So those are a lot of fun. <clears throat> and then hanging on my bag, I have our Deathly Hallows um, progress keeper, or Deathly Hallows. St. Ophelius explains the Deathly Hallows. And that was the first installment of our Harry Potter club. Um, I do, ha I have been dying that up quite a bit. It's in the shop. This is it on the Stellina base. And I just love it. So there will be more of this in the shop later. Um, oh, I wanted to mention that um, we do have our Stellina knit along going on. It's just springtime, summer Stellina knit along. There are some fun people are joining along, a couple other podcasters. And that was what my leg warmers were. I don't even know why I completely forgot to mention that. But... Um, but yeah, so it's been a lot of fun seeing what people are knitting in, in Stellina. I noticed not a lot of people have been joining in, so I don't know if people aren't enjoying knitting with Stellina, or maybe people just don't feel, have too many knit-alongs going on. But we have a lot of Stellina in the shop. I have Sachet. I have a really new, fun colorway called Carnival. I don't really knit with very colorful yarns, and it's just... I don't know, it's not really my thing. Um, I do like, I mean, color as in rainbow. I definitely like color, but this was kind of my take on a really fun rainbow. It has really um, heathered tones of, of purples, pinks, reds. Um, even like a really, really, really heathered orange, yellow, green, and blue lilac, just with black um, speckles over it. So it's really gorgeous. We, I have this on soft sock and I have it on the Stellina base too. So that would be fun for the Stellina knit along. Um, I do have quite a bit of the Jeunesse singles. This is Let's Hold Hands. Really pretty one. Um, skinny dipping. This one's Let's Be Friends. Just a really pretty purpley pink. Woodland. Lots of tonals. These aren't all of them, but um, really pretty ones. I feel like I feel like these ones could even look really cool together. This one is mint, fog. Um, here we have ash. That could go really cool with um, Let's Be Friends. I do have sea salt, 
so many other ones. And all of those are available on lots of different bases. So, um, so yeah. What else? We have been making some delicious muffins lately. Um, oh, I told you guys last time that Elodie had her, um, her test for her, if she was allergic to, to milk products and things like that. That went so well. I don't even think it could have gone better. We went to the, the doctor's office and Elodie wasn't really nervous. I felt like she was kind of more excited because she really, Elodie loves milk. Um, and I don't even think she realized how much she loves milk until she was not able to have it. And we don't even have, like, a lot of milk. She was kind of only allowed a glass of milk every day anyway. Um, whether it was in a sear with a muesli or whether it was, you know, a glass and it's not a large glass. Just because I feel like milk is kind of ridiculous. I know that maybe is a controversial issue, but um, I kind of don't understand it. So, we don't have it at our house anymore. It's something that we're not buying, actually. No milk at all. Um, the only kind of dairy products that we have here are cheeses. Um, and maybe an occasional yogurt. We're, we're kind of eating more of a um, coconut yogurt if we want to do something like that, which is delicious. It has a very strong coconut flavor, but Itodi does not like the soy yogurts at all. She does like the coconut ones, and they're delicious in a smoothie. So anyway, we've been making these vegan brownies. Wait, back to the, the test. She was a little bit excited, and once we got there, we waited a little bit, and then it was our turn to go into the doctor's office, and you usually, you know, sit in there and wait for the doctor to come. And the doctor came into the room, and I felt like the doctor seemed a little, a little bit nervous. She wasn't, like, super friendly or anything. She was just like, hello. And I just thought, what are you doing coming in here when a child is getting their blood drawn? Like, I feel like you should be, hi, how are you? Oh, you know what I mean? Really nice, trying to make them feel comfortable. You're a stranger to this child anyway. Um, our doctor was on holiday or she was sick, I'm not sure, but there was kind of a stand-in doctor for her. So it's not even the doctor that Elodie sees all the time. And so, like I said, for her to be, it was just, I, it kind of stuck. So, um, I, I pretended, you know, like everything was cool, like she was, you know, I didn't say anything obviously about her acting strange, so. I never tell Elodie, okay, you don't need to be scared. I don't say things like that because then she wonders why she would have to be afraid. So, um, yeah, we just told her that she was getting a shot, nothing about getting her blood drawn, and she laid there and the doctor kind of squeezed her arms and Elodie, you could see that she looked a little bit nervous, but um, the doctor took out the needle, Elodie saw it, and there was a tube coming out of the needle. And Elodie just kind of looked and she said, is that the needle? And we said, yep, yeah, that's the needle. And she stuck it in her arm and Elodie said nothing. You know, she didn't cry, she didn't say ow, she just laid there and the doctor's assistant was, she was fantastic. She was really nice, she was really bubbly and asked Elodie questions and just seemed really interested in Elodie. And Elodie laid down and she put her feet on my lap and Robert was able to stay home and watch Ruby, which was really nice. Um, originally, Ruby was supposed to come with, and I oh, I was kind of dreading that because I really wanted to be able to give Adody my support, but his rehearsal was starting later that day. Um, it was you know, being held off a little bit, so that was it worked out so well. Um, yeah, afterwards we went to the Bioladen, the organic store, and we got a bunch of fresh fruit, and Elodie got some cherry, um, shawla, and a nice piece of, like, brötchen, and um, she just kind of had a nice little morning. And then we got to Kita shortly before lunch. So, um, yeah, it went really, really well. Um, she's not allergic, so we don't know what she was getting the hives about. They're doing other tests now this week, and if they find something, they'll let us know. She hasn't gotten hives since. Um, she, I don't think she's really, she's had cheese. She's had some cheese and we've had no hives from it. So that's good. Um, I've been making vegan muffins. They are so, so yummy. I've made them with strawberries. I've made them with apple cinnamon. Yesterday I made them with blueberries. 
It's a recipe that makes just nine muffins. They're quite small too. They're not like overly large ones. And so it's just been kind of fun to experiment. I think next time I'll make maybe banana ones or I like the apple cinnamon ones the best, but Elodie hates those, which I just think is weird. How can you not like apple cinnamon muffin? Um, the strawberry are her favorite. And she's eating a blueberry one for the first time down at the park today. So I'm curious what she thinks about it. Um, so yeah, we just had a really, really nice time. Ruby's birthday is in a week and a half, which is so crazy. I can't believe she's going to be a year old. Oh, it's really funny. We've been going down to the park and... Was it yesterday or the day? I think it was Friday that she just really started to play in the sand. She was really kind of terrified of it at first and now she's just really getting into it and enjoying playing in it. And this morning we were at the park already. Like I said, on the weekend we like to spend quite a bit of time outside. And this morning, she really, we were outside for maybe two hours. She sat in the sand the entire time, just playing in the sand by herself was insane. So, just really nice. Um, we've just been having a great time. I've been having the time of my life dyeing yarns this week. Tomorrow, actually, I'm going to be dyeing up after all this time, which is, um, it seems like it's the favorite of the Harry Potter Club. So I know a lot of, I've been getting a lot of emails of people who really want that yarn, and um, that will be coming with the always with the, with the fawn um, progress keeper. So um, that will be in the shop probably Wednesday as well. Um, tomorrow I'm dying up, I'll probably die up maybe 40, 50 skeins of that. Um, <clears throat> and I'm doing that all on the Bakken, which is um, our cashmere merino base. It's a super wash. So, yeah, I'm really, really excited. Um, we won't really do anything for Ruby's birthday. She's a year old. Um, Robert will be working all day. And um, I'll maybe make fun little, maybe vegan. Ruby doesn't like to eat anything. That's the thing. She just likes breast milk. <laughs> she just likes to drink. Um, and she likes bananas. That's kind of the only thing that she'll really eat. We've tried to give her a lot of different foods, but she's just not interested. So um, I'm really itching to knit on something. I feel like um, I feel a little bit exhausted today. Robert and I, um, we moved. Well, Robert did. I didn't do any of it, actually. <clears throat> I had been talking about taking the legs off of our couch for quite some time um, because I kind of wanted it to be more Asian style where it's at the floor where, you know, you're not sitting up high. And it would be nice anyway for Ruby because she always wants to sit up on the couch if we're just hanging out there, if we're playing, if we're watching a movie, if we're watching something on the telephone, the television, and it just kind of stinks, you know, that if she were to get on there, she would fall off, so we really, really have to watch her. And so today, Robert took the legs off of the couch, and so I'm really excited to see how it will be tonight, because every Sunday, we have popcorn. I think I talked about this last Sunday, I'm sure I did and we watch a movie. So we'll see what we watch tonight. I would like to watch Beauty and the Beast, um, but Eternity doesn't like to watch anything with a villain in it. It really disturbs her. So we'll see if she wants to watch that. Um, and we'll have, for dinner, we'll just have a strawberry banana with some coconut yogurt and some spinach, a smoothie. That's what we'll have. I made homemade pizza for lunch today. Um, with vegan cheese and um, um, vegan chorizo, which is delicious, and loads of red peppers. Oh my goodness. And red onions. It was so yummy. So um, while it wasn't super unhealthy, I really want to load up on some fruit and have um, some yummy smoothies because we'll be having some popcorn, you know, later in the evening. So um, that's just kind of what we've been up to. We've just had a really nice time relaxing and enjoying, trying to enjoy time with each other. Robert has been gone quite a bit lately and um, 
it's just nice to spend the weekends together. We did go to the vegan ice cream place on Friday, picked up Aino very early from Kita. I think we picked her up at 10 and we just spent the day at the park. Robert had the day off and um, we picked her up a little bit later. We picked her up at 10, which is actually very early. Um, but we did bring her to Kita because I had a bunch of orders and things to pack and a little bit of work to do. So um, it's just been nice. Uh, I don't think Robert has any days off this week, but if he does, we definitely try to do stuff together. I will stop working um, when he's here and um, just spend time together because, you know, we don't have it so much and I can work during the week and I know that everything will be fine if I miss a work day. It's, it's really, really hard for me to do. Jody and Tracy were talking about this if you work from home because Jody has her, you know, Mrs. Brown's bags. And um, Jody said that she is really good about stopping in the evening before dinner. And it can be very hard. Um, definitely, definitely can be because I love what I do. I honestly love my job. I don't think there's anything about it that I don't like. There are definitely, you know, things that I enjoy less than other things, but for the most part, I really, really love and, and I'm very, very passionate about what I do. So it can be hard to drop it, um, but I am getting way better about it and having my workspace in a different room definitely, definitely helps. So, um, so yeah, it's just all about trying to, you know, prioritize it. I'm looking forward to another week of doing a lot of knitting. I would love to get back into embroidery. I see that Andy from Andre Sue Knits um, has been doing some fabulous embroideries. I, I've done a lot of, you know, sayings with flowers is kind of what I did for my embroidery when, when I was working on it a lot. And there was a time when I was very, very obsessed with cross-stitching. Um, my friend Maeve and I, who gave me the, the wine bottle that hangs as a light, um, I taught her to cross stitch and we were just obsessed with it for maybe a year, a couple of years ago. And I do have some cross stitches that I would really love to get into. I know Sue is doing the cross stitch revolution, I think, is the hashtag. And I would love to get back into it again. So those are just kind of all things that I'm thinking about with summer coming. I definitely see that being a possibility. It's a nice, easy, portable. Um, project that isn't too warm in your lap um, and I'm excited about it I'm excited about all of the possibilities and things and places will go um, so I hope that you guys have a really nice week and I really look forward to seeing you guys again soon bye